Yo, what's up? It's Josh. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be going over 15 Ableton tips that I wish I knew as a beginner. Let's start off with something simple. I love to keep my tracks organized. A quick way to do that is if you have a bunch of instruments grouped, you can just right click on the group and hit assign track color to group tracks and clips, and it'll make it all the same color. This is really useful just to make everything uniform. Another way to clean up your session is to get rid of this little bar up here. I don't personally use it. If you do, hats off to you. But the way to get rid of that is command option O. If you want to clean up your session even more, you can go over here. If you don't want to see the inputs or outputs, you can get rid of that. If you don't want to see your return track, just mess with these and it'll really help clean up your session a little bit. The next little trick I want to talk about is multiple plugin windows. And so this comes in handy. Let's say you're EQing a vocal and you want to also want to compress it at the same time. Because sometimes when you compress it, it can kind of affect the way the EQ sounds. And so if you want to have both of these up at the same time, what you need to do is go to your preferences and you need to go to the plugins tab and enable multiple plugins. And now you can open up as many plugins as you want at the same time. The next thing we're going to talk about are instrument effect racks. Now, a lot of people know about audio effect racks where you just hit command G. Then you can set up a dry and a wet signal, which is basically like having a send on your track. But you can also do this with instruments. This allows you to layer any sound if it's in MIDI. Let's take this kick, for instance. If we wanted to add a layer to it, we could just click on it, hit command G, and then we could add another sample to it. Just duplicate it. And then we could add as many samples as we want. Add another kick, vanilla kick. Oh yeah. And so we would just drag it on there and we can control each one separately. We could add reverb to it. We could add EQ, saturation, compression. This way you have complete control over each sound. Another cool thing you can do is import tracks from other sessions. I know a lot of times as producers, we have sessions that we don't finish, but there are parts of them that we may want to go back to and use in a new project. So the way you would do this, I have an old version of this project that I was working on, and I liked a synth part or a vocal that I used in that, but it's currently not in this project file. All you would do is go find the part that you want. Let's say it's the original vocal that we had in the other session. And so all we could do is just drag that OG vocal in there, and then we have that exact same part from our old session in our new current session. And you can import as many as you like. This is really helpful because now we don't have to open up that old project, export the stem, and then import it into the new project. Next, I want to go over some preference settings and specifically having to do with plugins. Now, when I first started out, when I was installing plugins, a lot of times I was having trouble because they wouldn't show up. A problem was that all the plugin sources weren't turned on and so they wouldn't show up. If you're having that problem, you need to make sure to turn on the audio units, the VST2 plugin system folders, and the VST3 plugin system folders. Now, if that still doesn't work, it might be as simple as just hitting this reset scan button and allowing Ableton to search the computer for any plugins that it might have missed. Another important preference is in this file folder tab. And the specific one we want to target is create analysis files. Normally in Ableton, this is turned on. And what this does is create a new ADG file for every single element of the song. This eats up a lot of your hard drive space and can really slow down Ableton. And you want to turn this off to save CPU. And just because those ADG files are really not necessary. Another cool trick I want to talk about is in the echo plugin, which is a stock Ableton delay. One of the problems that you have if you just put a delay on the track that you're using, if you turn up the dry wet, your vocal is going to decrease in volume. Now, a way to get around this is just to right click and hit equal loudness. Now, when you turn up the dry wet, the plugin is going to compensate and make sure your vocal remains at the exact same level the whole time, which is really helpful. Next is something I just started doing, but I want to be using all the time. And this is using custom keyboard shortcuts. The way you can do this in Ableton is by hitting command K and then clicking on the element you want to create a shortcut for. In Ableton, there's no shortcut for a chord. So let's say we wanted to create one. After clicking, in command K, we would click on the record button and say we want to make it R. And then we hit command K again and it's locked in. And now when we hit R, it's going to record. Another helpful shortcut is to make the mix mono. And the way you would do this is just hit command K once again, click on this utility mono plugin, hit M and then hit command K. And now anytime you're playing your track, if you just hit M, you can check it in mono. Another really useful technique is to create fades for multiple tracks. And so the way you would do that is just highlight the parts that you want to fade and hit command option F and voila, now you have all the tracks with nice, perfect fades on them. Now let's say you just opened an Ableton project and you just made all your shortcuts to help your workflow. What you can now do with this is create a template. And so the way you would do that, you could either save as a template or you could just save it as the default set. So anytime you open up Ableton, it's gonna automatically have your shortcuts ready to go. Now this one's kind of random, but I find myself using this a lot and, that's, and that is just to stretch audio. And so the way you would do that is make sure the warp mode is enabled on the piece of audio and then just hold down stretch. And now you can increase or decrease the timing of that clip. Now the 15th and final technique that I wish I knew is this bass mono function. And so the way you would find that. What's up guys, sorry to interrupt your programming, but my camera broke at this time and didn't get the necessary footage. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you through this. So what you would do is just search for the plugin utility. And once you do that, you should be able to see it at the bottom under bass mono. And from there you can select the frequencies that you wanna make mono. I usually recommend around 90 to 110 Hertz, just so you don't interfere with the lower mids, but feel free to experiment 
experiment and whatever sounds best to your ear. That's it for today's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to get to a thousand by the end of the year. Also, if you have any video ideas or ways that I can improve the content, make sure to let me know below. Also, if you need any help at all or have any questions, feel free to reach out on Instagram. I'm always here to help. Regardless of anything though, y'all keep vibing and have an amazing rest of your week. I'll see you